This show brought to you by Read the Play, Promoted Trophy and Clothing Company, Kempe International, to Grandy Cycle and Sport. Welcome back to the Geelong Junior Football Netball Show. We're moving on to talk football now. We've moved out to St Ormonds. We're taking in the under-16 Division 1 football game between St Ormonds and Grovedale. And Grovedale's coach, Paul, has been kind enough to give us his time. Paul, thanks for your time. Just talk us through how the boys have been going so far this season. Yeah, it's been a struggle. Uh, we've got two sides out there, under-16A and under-16B, and uh, we struggle for numbers, which has uh, been probably the hardest thing throughout the year. Uh, today, we've just got the bare 18 again, and the second side have got the bare 18 as well, so... That's been a big thing, uh, but the boys have been pretty competitive throughout the year. We're not quite as good as the top four side, but all in all, you know, when we play the top four, top four sides, we're uh, quite competitive. So is the club going to have to put a focus then on maybe getting a few more kids in for next season? Yeah, it's a big focus. They've been working pretty hard this year. Um, the club uh, has got two under-14 sides as well and I think three under-12 sides, so there's plenty of, plenty of depth there. But the, the, the thing is this, like under-16s, if we have two or three injuries and a few, play, a few players unavailable, we struggle. So that's, if, if we had everyone on deck, we'd have two sides, so it wouldn't be so bad. Do you get a few of the senior guys uh, helping you? We know uh, there's been a huge culture change in the way things are happening in the seniors at the moment. Do a few of them come down now and help the juniors out as well? Well, that was the main focus at the start of the year. Um, there was a big push by uh, Scott Bond, our... Uh, um, junior coordinator and as this year as I've seen it hasn't happened so it's been pretty disappointing um, we haven't had much help from the seniors which which is very disappointing yeah do you think you'll be uh, looking to continue on in the role as coach out at Grotow next year uh, I'm hoping to I've uh, really enjoyed it this year I haven't coached for a long time and all well, during footy anyway so um, hopefully I can stick around and uh, coach a couple of kids that are playing next year in under 16s and, and go from there yeah what skills have you tried to work on throughout the year with them, Paul? Just mainly, um, mainly we've, we've uh, worked hard on our uh, skills, um, trying to keep possession of the footy. And the main thing I've, I've tried to do this year is try and prepare them for the under-18s. Um, it's a big step next year for the under-16 kids going up. So we try to develop and, and prepare them for that big next step because under-18s, you know, these kids will be going up against, you know, um, adult footballers. So... That was the main focus, trying to prepare them for next year and get them ready for under-18s football. So, yeah. And do you think they will be ready when they take that step? Uh, we've got a fair, well, probably 10 that'll probably go up, and I think um, there's six or seven that uh, will make the step, I think. Yeah, no worries. Uh, we're looking to end the year on a high note here today at St Albans. How do you think the boys are going to go? I would be competitive again. Um, last, last time they beat us by 14 points, and we've got a few out, which doesn't help, but um, I'm sure the boys will have a crack, yeah. All, right, Paul, all the best. Thanks for your time on the Geelong Junior Football and Netball Show. Moving on in our football segment here on the Geelong Junior Football and Netball Show, we've got Nathan from the Grovedale Under-16 side that takes on St Ormonds out here at St Ormonds today. Nathan, uh, tell us a little bit about the position that you're going to be filling today. Um, I'll just probably be just playing in centre and just moving around with the ball and, yeah, just hope sneak into the forward and kick a couple of goals. Now, I know from going to school with you that the boys know you as Speedy. Where would you get that nickname from? Um, I was back in primary school, actually. We just used to, I don't know, just do a lot of running in that. So, and just yeah, it just came from that. <laughs> You've always enjoyed playing footy, and have you always played at Grovedale? Um, no, I actually started at Le um, Thompson for a couple of years, and then St Albans, and then I've been at Grovedale for like six years now. So, so why did you choose to make that switch to Grovedale? Um, oh, I think it was mo mostly because my mates were there. So, yeah, that's about it. And that's always why you play footy, isn't it, to play with your mates? Yeah, exactly. Yep. Certainly. Are you one of those boys that uh, your coach Paul was telling us about that will be playing under 18s footy next year? Um, yeah, certainly, yeah. I'd like to try and see how I go, so, yeah. You've had the chance to play some uh, representative footy too, uh, playing for Geelong against Northern earlier in the year. How did you find that experience? Yeah, it was good, actually, like, especially because it's one of the Metro teams and see how they perform against us. So, yeah, it was a good experience. How do you think you're going to go today out there against uh, St Albans? Um, I reckon we'll give them a good run for their money because we've got nothing to lose and I reckon we've we'll, yeah, got a big chance to win. All right, Nathan, all the best out there, as you say. Hopefully you can finish your year on a high note with a win out here at St Albans. Moving on again in our football segment, we've got Mark, the junior coordinator out here at St Albans. And Mark, there's going to be some pretty stirring scenes out here just before the game between us, St Albans and Grovedale, honouring one of our great St Albans people that tragically passed away last week. Absolutely, Tim. Look, it's uh, been a great tragedy uh, that we lost one of our great, great stalwarts of the club. 
Uh, he'd been involved there for some you know, 30 odd years, been part of his life and uh, dual premiership player here at the club. Um, and look, we're going to uh, respect him again today by having a minute silence and uh, for his contribution, not only for the senior division, but also for the junior program, that it was his, uh, his passion, I suppose you'd say, that he really wanted to develop um, the kids in their, in their own right to become not only the great junior players, and, but uh, to then go on and be uh, senior footballers at this club. So um, we're going to have a minute silence for him again today and just to uh, pay our last respects. No, that's fantastic to hear that uh, Adrian Ellis will be on at uh, St Norman's, an absolute legend. Just talk us through uh, a few of the steps that you've put in place this year to strengthen that junior program, Mark, and what your role also entails as junior coordinator. Yeah, look, Tim, it's um, it's not it's not just uh, a singular person doing any one role. We've got a, we've got a great uh, committee and um, a greater bunch of people around me that are really uh, bonding as a group, and we've got a fa fantastic um, uh, canteen. Uh, uh, bunch of uh, ladies there that do work, time timeless amount of work but we've uh, you know we've got some uh, coaches that we're trying to uh, develop along the way to uh, build all the strengths of all the kids in their different age groups and uh, hopefully we can develop the, their skills as well as uh, the kids to then go forward and to become very good senior footballers for the club. One of the good things here at St Elmans that we are seeing is uh, people, uh, players from your junior program are pretty quickly progressing through and playing senior football we've seen in the last couple of years with a guy like Justin Maher and Seeing him must give hope to a few of the junior players that if they push through and stay with the club in under-18s that they really can be playing senior football for St Ormonds in the not-too-distant future. Oh, absolutely, yeah, that's, uh, that's a given, Tim, because uh, that's the culture of most clubs and we're all striving to do that to make sure that we have can keep our players involved at club level and uh, they then develop into those senior players. But it's always a difficult task to try to contain them, at, uh, especially some uh, you know, critical age groups like under 16s and, and even probably under 14s to that extent so it's a matter of producing some programs that can uh, stimulate their minds in terms of how they develop their own skills and, and make sure that they're happy in the environment that they're with and, and then we can go forward and hopefully we can uh, you know, uh, maintain all those players in the future. Now you've got two under-16 sides playing out here today. How have the numbers been throughout the season? Are you finding that the junior programs are building nicely and getting stronger and stronger? Absolutely. We believe that uh, we've probably uh, you know, we've got a great uh, future in, in our under-16 program. The, 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 the players are coming every year. Um, we've got, as I say, there's a game going on out there at the minute. Our Divi 4 side, we're playing Port Arlington, and uh, they're going to be playing finals. Our Divi 1 side, we're just a little bit unlucky for the year, but they were very, very competitive in that area. Um, but we really believe that we've got a great nucleus of kids that are then going to go forward and, and some will be going in under 18s next year and hopefully they may be playing senior football next year. It's a fairly competitive area for players. You've got clubs like East Geelong, Thompson in the Geelong District Footy League that are also looking to get players from this area. Uh, do you find you're competing against them at the start of the year to try and, try and attract players? Oh, not really, Tim. I think that we've already built up that... Um, uh, nucleus of players from uh, you know, years gone by when Andrew Beertzel was coordinating the club and he's been a great help to me uh, in, in helping us uh, get our right structures into place before that and before him as well there was other people involved so it's not just you know it's this year it's been the years previously that it's all seen, been put into place and there's been a lot, lot of work by a lot of people so as I say I'm, I'm, I've got my head at the top but I'm, I'm being governed by a lot of other people that are helping my, my role out and makes it that much easier. In terms of your role, how many hours a week uh, are you putting in out here at St Albans? Put it this way, Tim, I'm probably home only maybe once a week and might be only for a two hours. So, look, you're here for a lot of time and I'm not the only one. We're all here and we're doing it for our kids to develop and uh, we love to see it all happening and I think uh, every club is in that in going for the same type of thing. So, so you've got a young fella running around out here in a St Albans jumper? I've got one in the under-16 and one in under-14, so, uh, yeah, I'm here for the long haul. So. And so definitely around next year as well in the junior coordinator's role? Yeah, absolutely, mate. It's been great. And uh, as I say, we'll, uh, we'll hope we'll be uh, doing some bigger things next year. All right, Mark. Well, we're really happy to hear that things are going well out here in the junior program at St Normans. That's all we've got for you uh, this week on the Geelong Junior Football and Netball Show. Be sure to join us next week, Friday morning from 7am. This show brought to you by Read the Play, Promoted Trophy and Clothing Company, Kempe International, DeGrandy Cycle and Sport.